Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you another Are You Afraid of the Dark episode review. And this episode comes from Season 6, and it's called The Tale of Vampire Town. I'm just going to be up front. This is one of my new favorite Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes, if not my all-time favorite. This was a first-time watch for me, only because out of all the seasons, the first five, which are known as the original run, and then the revival era, which are season six and seven, which came out a few years after uh, the first five seasons had wrapped up in the mid-90s. This episode comes from season six, which is the one season I have not really completed in its entirety. I've watched the first five at least two or three times over. I've watched season seven in its entirety because a user a few years back had the entire run on YouTube and I decided just to watch it starting with the tale of the silver side. But season six is kind of unventured territory and I heard some, you know, some buzz about this episode. So I wanted to check it out and man, this episode is so up my alley. I love just about everything about this episode. It's one of those things. The writer, uh, Allison Bingman had only did three episodes in the show entirely. She did two episodes back in the original run in season two. She did the tale of the dark dragon and the tale of the whispering walls. And those two episodes aren't really buzzed about in the community. Uh, at least the are you afraid of the dark community. And for good reason, dark dragon gets kind of, you know, shade and hate thrown at it from time to time. Um, I don't mind it. I haven't rewatched it recently. Uh, it might warm up to me. But I remember from memory it was alright. And then Whispering Walls it was pretty decent itself. But this, her one episode coming back to the show in season 6, I'm glad that she saved something to make it you know, worth coming back for. This, to me, was just fantastic writing. From her subverting tropes with almost every character that you can think of, is great. And I'm going to get into that as I go over in the review. But, wow, the writing in this was really creative. And it really perplexes me how this episode gets swept under the rug by the community. Nobody ever brings it up. This very well could be the most underrated and underappreciated Are You Afraid of the Dark episode of all time. The directing was done by Mark Soulard, who I think really capitalized on making... A great setting for this episode and uh, I give huge props to him and the production team for what they were able to accomplish with how you know small scale this episode was it was super fun so yeah I'm getting way ahead of myself but off the bat if you have not seen this episode you can go stream this right now on daily motion I think there's two or three users that have it up go watch this episode this is fantastic um, are You Afraid of the Dark <laughs> has like four vampire stories in its arsenal. And Goosebumps has like vampire breath in the TV show. It perplexes me how out of these four vampire stories, you know, Tale of the Nightly Neighbors, Tale of the Midnight Madness, Tale of the Night Shift, and then Tale of Vampire Town, that three out of the four of these are in my top six of the whole show. And... The one that isn't Nightly Neighbors, I still get a fondness out of because it's homaging stories like Fright Night. So, yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark and Vampires, you cannot go wrong with any of those episodes. Maybe Nightly Neighbors might not do it for you, but the other three are fantastic, including this one. Go watch some vampire stories from Are You Afraid of the Dark. They're, they're, they're awesome, okay? So, let's get into the plot overview without giving too much away. So... In the revival era, which this season takes place in, uh, in season six, there is a new Midnight Society that's different from, you know, the ones we knew from the first five seasons, and it's led by Tucker, who was um, much younger <laughs> in the in, in the original run. Uh, but one of the new guys, I forget his name, and I don't want to pretend like I know his name. Um, he is presenting the story, and he presents it like tale of the uh well not tale of the but tale of vampire town which is kind of funny to me because not often in the show do you get a title of of the story that doesn't have tale of the so it's really weird when you have to think about it <laughs> uh but yeah so the title kind of caught my eye when i first heard it 
uh, and the story kicks on, and it starts off with kind of like a prologue type of thing. Uh, in this town called, uh, I think it's called Westeria, there's this man, um, his name is Carl, and he, you know, runs his funeral home in Westeria, and it's rainy one night, and he locks his door, and he gets a phone call, and then he, you know, he's on the phone, and then he thinks he hears some noises coming from the other room where he keeps these caskets, and then he goes into the casket room, and he's following the sound of the noise, and it's leading into the embalming room where there's bodies laying around, and Carl gets attacked by one of these bodies that may or may not be a vampire. And uh, he gets kind of protected because he's wearing a, a cross on his, you know, around his neck. And the vampire gets repelled and runs away. So then the next scene cuts to about a week later and there's a family driving in a minivan. And you see these, uh, this couple, uh, uh, this man and a woman, and they have this kid in the back who's her son. And he's dressed in, like, vampire goth attire, and he's wearing, like, like, it's hard to describe, but he has, like, one piercing in his ear, and it's, like, a dangling earring, and he has these black glasses that are, like, sunglasses, essentially, and he wears, like, <laughs> you know, you know, like, how, like, Blade, the vampire hunter, would dress, like, Wesley Snipes Blade, that's what this kid is trying to replicate, and he's in the back, and, uh, he's writing, he's writing, um, in his diary or journal about traveling to uh, Wisteria to hunt down this vampire called Dreyfus. And Dreyfus, he heard from this magazine that he reads, you know, about occult, I guess an occult magazine, right? And he has decided to pick this destination for the family to visit for vacation because he's essentially like this only child, right? And as you get to uh, understand... Uh, the relationship of uh, the kid who's named Adder and his two uh, and his parents. His parents are really skeptical about Adder's, you know, <laughs> interest. They think he's weird, and it's rightfully so. He is kind of an odd kook, uh, being into vampires and occult stuff. And you kind of get a sense that uh, Adder uh, is kind of playing this facade because he's constantly correcting himself. When he when he uh, when he's trying to talk to his parents, he's like he's like has this one tone of voice that he's used to. But when he's wearing this persona, he has to be talking a certain way. <laughs> so he's like kind of struggling keeping up with his act. And his dad and his mom kind of call him out on it. And his dad makes fun of him. Is like, hey, you know, instead of going to play vampires, why don't we go to an NFL game instead? And his mom's like, no, no, we told Adder we get to do this, so we're going to go do this. And you kind of get this sense that these parents are enabling this kid to, you know, in their minds, you know, facilitate a fantasy. Which is, you know, very thought-provoking stuff. You know, you can kind of project uh, the parenting of Adder on a lot of things, um, like enabling people and stuff. And Adder definitely, you know, him being an only child, you can kind of understand that maybe the parents are doing this, you know, for, you know, you know, for Adder because he doesn't have any siblings and, you know, they're, the, they're all he's got. So there's a lot of understanding and subversion of tropes there. You know, Adder, he's dressed like a goth kid, but he's not really goth. And he's doing it to kind of feel like, like he's in his own little... Uh, bubble universe of being a vampire hunter and then his parents he would think that would be really mean to him and kind of bully him are actually more supportive of him and uh in kind of an offhandy way so while they're driving through the countryside um they end up at the uh hotel uh where they're going to be staying at in westeria and it's rumored uh that all the 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 buildings in westeria sit upon a ginormous underground catacomb that supposedly houses vampires and would house Dreyfus. So they get to this uh, hotel and Adder and his mom have this conversation about his dad, about like how he wishes he can express how he feels about his interests without his dad kind of like, you know, shrugging him off or making him feel bad for it. So his mom's like, you know what? We came here to do you... 
Um, we don't, you know, I know we have these football tickets, but you don't have to feel bad about that. We're here to do whatever you want. So Adder is kind of, you know, excited. So the parents go in to check in the hotel and they meet this guy. Uh, his name is Stanley. And Stanley runs the hotel and uh, his parent and the parents greet Stanley, said that they're checking in. And the reason why they're checking in is because uh, Adder is interested in vampires. And this kind of catches Stanley off guard. And he, he's like, what makes you think there's vampires here? And they're like, oh, yeah, all these legends. And Stanley kind of makes a comment that they, the town itself is trying to put past those vampire rumors that have been going around and, uh, you know, affecting the town's reputation. So the parents kind of shrug it off and they go to check out the room. And then Stanley's confronted by Adder. And Adder is pressing him to take him to the catacombs. And Stanley's like, the catacombs are closed. And he's like, well, I'm going to go whether you like it or not. It's my destiny to go visit these visit these catacombs and Adder uh, has this mentality that he's going to do it regardless so uh, Stanley's like all right whatever this guy's creepy and he calls he calls up Carl who was you know in the prologue getting attacked by this vampire and Stanley makes it sound like he has suspicion that the, per the person that possibly attacked him is here trying to go into the catacombs which is Adder so the next scene cuts with Adder. He's writing in his journal and his parents are, you know, down in the lobby with him, talking with him. And Adder, you know, kind of shows his father, like, you know, if I told you what I'm doing, you would just make fun of me. And his father, you know, kind of scolds him a little bit and then goes, you know, up to bed and so does his mom. So when his parents leave, he decides to head to this basement door that says, like, keep out or off limits. And he, and he knows that underneath the basement is going to be a connection into the catacombs. So he decides to go down there by himself. He brings a flashlight, a camera, and uh, he, he has this vial <laughs> that he reveals that it's like Raven's blood and it's supposed to be irresistible to vampires and stuff. So he, he weaponizes, you know, what he has. And he heads out in the catacombs and he's looking around and you see these really great looking prop effects of skeletons and you know along the dirt walls and he's you know really enamored by how massive and um, expansive this place is and he wanders pretty deep into the catacombs and he discovers a tomb like structure and he wipes off the dust on the name and it says Dreyfus so he's like oh so Dreyfus must be real so when he's taking a picture of it he hears voices and he sees Stanley, who runs the hotel, and Carl from the prologue. And they're carrying stakes and hammers. And they're going to try to stake Adder because they both think that he's a vampire. So Adder's like, whoa, 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 I'm not a vampire. And he like takes something that's holding the, the tomb shut. And he takes it out and throws it at him. Uh, throws it at the two gentlemen to kind of distract them. And Adder kind of bolts it and shuts a gate. And then... Uh, of course, the two men chase him and try to stake him through the gate. And Stanley's like, look, he looks like a vampire. We got to kill him. And uh, it kind of goes, uh, you know, that's also kind of subtle commentary about, you know, you know, how people dress and carry themselves can uh, affect others' behavior sometimes, you know. But that's more subtle stuff, and I'll get into that in the review portion. But, um, yeah, so he's being chased and... He's, you know, like, why are these two thinking I'm a vampire? I, I, you know, I gotta convince them I'm not a vampire. So he finds this door and he shuts himself in the door. And then he hears some rustling and he opens the door. And wouldn't you know, Dreyfus is there. And when you see this thing, it looks disgusting. It doesn't really look like your average vampire. This is another one of those techniques that Bingman put into the script to kind of uh, subvert the trope of a vampire. Some people think that vampires are supposed to look like how <laughs> uh, Count Nightwing looked in Vampire Breath and Goosebumps. But I digress. This vampire does, looks the total opposite. He looks decrepit. He looks scary. He's been trapped underneath these, uh, under in the catacombs for years, 
because the town has closed off the catacombs. So he hasn't been able to feed in a long time, and he looks like he's like falling apart. And he's trying to get to Adder, and he's like, I need to eat you. And Adder is like, oh, you're not going to eat me. And he flashes a you know, camera in his face, and he runs away. And then he, um, he hears you know, Stanley and Carl nearby, so he has to find a way out. He finds this little tunnel, and he tries to crawl, crawl through the tunnel, and he has a close interaction with Dreyfus. And he makes it in through this tunnel, and it appears to be uh, the funeral home. Carl's funeral home so he barricades the hole and he hides in the in the in the morgue room where he hears Carl and Stanley coming through to look for him and he tries to escape but then he gets cornered by Carl and Stanley uh, trying to stake him again and he's trying to show him he's like hey look you know I'm not I'm a he's like I'm a vampire hunter you know but he, we all know as the audience that he's more of like a, a like a poser <laughs> Uh, that's, you know, not really a, a real vampire hunter. He's just trying to pretend to be cool and be a vampire hunter. So he's like trying to convince him. He's like, look, I have a reflection. And they're like, well, you know, that's not enough proof. Then all of a sudden the smoke billows up, billows up in the room. And then surprise, surprise, this is where the climax happens. Dreyfus appears in the room. And as soon as Dreyfus appears, Stanley just bolts <laughs> and gets out of there. And Carl and Adder are left to defend against Dreyfus, and Dreyfus uh, tries to pin Carl down, but Adder pulls out his uh, his uh, Raven's blood and tries to give it to the vampire, uh, you know, to, to bait him. And uh, <laughs> so the vampire takes it, and Carl's watching in astonishment as Adder uh, instinctively does something to handle Dreyfus, and something may or may not happen to Dreyfus, and the situation might be resolved a little bit. Well, after that happens, there's a, a kind of a mini flash forward where you see Adder's parents uh, waiting for Adder, talking about him, and they, you know, encounter Adder, and something has changed about him, and his parents have noticed it, and um, there's something about his character, and I'll get into that in the review portion, that has come full circle. He's no longer trying to be a poser. He's just willing to be himself. And you get the sense of that. So before they get to go off to the next part of their family vacation, he wants to go um, find Stanley to you know, have a word with him about not saying anything to his parents. And uh, something may or may not have happened... <laughs> Uh, when Adder did that, and there is a, a twist to the story that I don't want to spoil, and I'll leave it at that. So that's essentially the the, the story, uh, Vampire Town. And then the episode ends with the Midnight Society, you know, doing their usual shtick, putting out the fire, stuff like that, and yeah, that's how the story wraps up. So yeah, this this episode, right? The plot of review can only do with this so much justice. You really have to go watch this to appreciate this. Kyle Downs, who plays Adder, is does a fantastic job at selling this poser, vampire nerd type of character. Uh, he played Tom in an old story. He also played a character in the Lizzie McGuire TV show, if you're familiar with that. Uh, he hit, His character was great. Um... Carl and Stanley were fun little supporting characters in this romp. Dreyfus was an excellent villain. The parents, uh, you know, were kind of refreshing. You know, for a kid being kind of delusional like Adder is, they're still like supporting. <laughs> they're still supporting his his fantasy because they love him. And then he comes around like they were hoping and he comes around and he kind of learns himself through his experience in the episode so there's a lot of stuff going on in this episode that you don't see every day in kids horror stories you have a kid who isn't really honest with himself but he has a lot of personality there you can tell that he has vague interests in weird stuff and he's kind of projected that into his persona that how he carries himself and you can see those, that subtextual layer with his character and, um, and his parents 
of how he does this kind of because his parents don't appreciate the things that he likes. So he wears these things on his skin to kind of stand out and maybe make his parents see that this is what he's into. Which is kind of a poignant thing. And you would think that the parents would be, you know, mean to him, but they're actually really supportive, which is another subversion of a trope here. Uh, that it makes this episode so revisitable because it's just something you don't see every day. Like, you don't see this type of character uh, where he's pretending to be a vampire hunter and, like, you know, he's, you know, his persona on grad trying to, you know, prove himself to his family that, you know, he's the, he means business. But in reality, he's just a poser. And, <laughs> but, but that's, the, that's the honest truth. Like, him getting humbled by this experience by going into the catacombs and meeting Dreyfus and going through this whole, uh, you know, I guess physical and metaphysical change within his, within his psyche and how he carries himself is very is very gravitating to me. It's uh, it's something so simple yet so poignant that uh, I think deserves a lot of commending here. Uh, not to mention the set design, Westeria. I mean, we have a, a lot of shots in this episode of the countryside and you get like this is, town is kind of off the beaten path and uh, the catacombs look great where the fun part of this episode took place. You know, when Adder's down in the catacombs, th th this set design looks fantastic. The makeup on Dreyfus the Vampire is excellent too. Uh, what they were able to accomplish with that is fan is outstanding. Um, and not to mention, uh, you know, this story just feels so whole. Like you feel like <clears throat> you, you understand where these characters are in the beginning. The parents just want to want to be there for their for their son and love him and do things right by him. And then you know his their son gets to do what he wants to do, and then comes around and then wants to do something nice for them so it's 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 a it's a very wholesome story it feels very whole and it's very fun it's very lightning quick you put this thing on it goes by fast uh, it's so entertaining uh, adder is is just an out-of-the-box character in, on many levels really you, you'll never see another character like him um <clears throat> and it goes without mentioning that the ending to this story actually offers a genuine twist. Now, it's debatable whether this twist is kind of predictable or not, but I still think that this twist is dark. Like, this is very reminiscent to twists like Werewolf Skin, where you, if you've read that book and you know what happens to Alex Hunter... <laughs> Um, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a grimness to the ending of this story that Are You Afraid of the Dark just never goes to, hardly ever. And it's, it's fantastic in that regard. I love it as a shake-up episode for this show, and I love how dark it is just based on kids' horror in general. It's a very, like I said, grim, grim type of way to send a story off. Um, and the, and the way they, they, they use the mechanics of the, of the vampires in this story is fun you have a, a town known for having vampires you know the occult knows about it there's catacombs linked to the real world but there's also this disconnect with the human you know realm and understanding that you know supernatural stuff may exist so it's all considered you know hocus pocus stuff that's in tabloid papers that isn't considered real and it reminds me a lot of elements from mom's my mom's got a day with a vampire from the disney channel original movie uh, from 2000 where that kid was interested in the occult and he would go and read newspapers and magazines and stuff a lot of adder's character mirrors that character in that movie and i think that's why i like adder so much because i love that movie um in the vampire the vampire elements you know them being decrepit from being locked in the catacombs is a great idea the effects look great the teleportation aspect to it was fun uh, the Raven's blood element <laughs> is, is is so corny, but it, it's it's it works and it's fun. Um, and how and how the climax unfolds with Dreyfus, you know, there's CGI involved with this, and some people may look at it like a negative, but honestly, it was it was actually not that bad. You know, for late '90s CGI, I think some of it still holds up, and I like the way how that's how that climax came about. Uh, honestly, it. it 
you know, I got one more positive I want to say. The humor in this episode, it's it's trying to take itself serious, which I love. I, I love it when stories are able to take themselves seriously, but still have that layer of comedy in there that's not in your face, but you know to laugh. Like, Adder adjusting how he's talking to his dad is hilarious. Or um, some comments Adder makes... <laughs> <laughs> uh, while he's talking to people and this vampire hunter, you know, persona is hilarious. Um, because you, you know, you know that he's trying to act like this and it's funny. I mean, a lot of the stuff that happens with Adder is hilarious. And, you know, some of the comments made by the parents are, are funny too, because you totally understand the parents point of view with Adder. Uh, and you laugh at some of the things they say because they come off kind of underhanded to him. But also kind of like, you know, encouraging him. <laughs> Which, you know, I can totally see some people making the argument that this episode is an allegory for bad parenting. <laughs> because if you think about it, the parents are enabling him to go into a situation that, that is potentially dangerous. And for that, it could be considered totally stupid. But... Uh, I don't think that they were doing it out of naiveness because, you know, like I said, in the reality, they think that vampires aren't real. So I think that for this specific story, I think that argument really isn't that strong, but I can understand if you make it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this episode. Honestly, it, it, it really surprised me how well this is. This has held up very well. This is honestly my personal favorite. It has all the bells and whistles I want with a character with development, with story, engaging fun villains, you know, uh, ideas, subverting tropes here and there. It was great. Fantastic. So from a zero to five star basis, I have no negatives with this. I'm going to give this a perfect five out of five. Seriously, if you have not watched The Tale of Vampire Town, go watch this. Like I said, it's on daily motion. Um, there's like a couple users that have it. Go click on that online and go watch it for free. It's fantastic. I wish Paramount Plus would get this episode in the lineup on Paramount Plus so more people can uh, experience this because this is fantastic. So, yeah, look, that's my review of Tale of the Vampire Town. Let me know down in the comment section, did you love this episode or did you hate this episode? I'm dying to know, and I'll see you next time.